Hey there everyone, so this video is going to teach you not one, but two different ways to integrate on your TI-84. Now integration is a technique that has both graphical and algebraic implications. Sometimes the graph of it doesn't make sense and all you're looking for is an answer. Now unfortunately, your calculators can only manage one of the two types of integrals that we'll run into. There's definite and indefinite integrals. Now because your calculator requires an initial and a final value to integrate between, it's gonna be dealing with definite integrals, which is definitely more useful in practical applications. So let's take a look at that. First off, we'll need something to integrate. I'm gonna press Y equals, and I'll actually just graph a function. Uh, I'm gonna graph a fairly simple parabola, one that I know the roots because it's in factored form. And I'll just make sure I'm in zoom standard, and huzzah, my parabola shows up. There it is, right there. Fun. Now, I think what I wanna do is I wanna show you what integration actually does. So integration calculates, graphically, the area under a curve from one point to the next. Now, um, this is loosely described as the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, in that if you have two starting points, the integral between those two starting points is the area bound underneath the curve. Uh, I just blew that up with how I was saying it. But I don't think that that really matters for learning how to use your calculator. So let's go ahead and integrate. We'll go to second, we're gonna try and find the area under the curve starting at the y-axis and going up to that first zero, which looks to be at one. So we'll go second function calc, and we've seen value in zero and minimum and maximum in intersection before. These next two are calculus operators. So the first one is finding the derivative and the second one is finding the integral. That's what that little S means. It's the sum of a bunch of slices of this function that are this wide. And uh, now the heights of those slices and the width of those slices are multiplied by one another, which gives you an area, which is why we have an area under a curve. So I'll hit seven for enter, or for integrate, and it's saying lower limit. Well, great, my lower limit's at zero, but I can just type zero if I want as well. Now it's set my lower bound, and you can see much like when you're finding maximums and minimums, it has that dot indicating your lower bound. Now for my upper limit, I can trace over to it, or I can just remember that this function has a zero at one, and I can just type one, and you'll see it'll fill in that area. So it fills in that whole spot there and it tells me the area. The area of f of x dx, so between zero and one, underneath this curve is 1.333 or four thirds. We could do that by hand very easily as well too. But let's continue playing with this. What if I integrate further? Okay, let's go second function calculate, integrate, and I'm gonna integrate from zero, but instead of integrating to one, I'm gonna to integrate to three. And it's gonna highlight the portion below here and above here. But it's not gonna add them together. Watch what it does. Notice how my integral actually gets really, really, really close to zero. That e to the negative 14 means it's times 10 to the power negative 14. Well, what that means is this area and this area together are zero, but we just found out that this area was four thirds. So what's happened here? Well, anything underneath the x-axis is given a negative sign. So it's a negative area. So this statement just means that the integral from zero to three is zero, meaning that that area above and that area below are about equal. I don't know, do they look equal to you? So that's a way to integrate graphically, but what if we don't want to integrate graphically? Well, let's just get out of our graphing mode here and let's type math, because that's what we want to do. We want to do some math. Now, fn int is function integrate. And you'll see our symbol here. That s is a little elongated, but that means the sum. And we can go from zero to one. So that's my lower bound, that's my upper bound. Inside this bracket, I'm going to type an expression. And I'm actually just going to type the same expression that we were working with. x minus 1, x minus 3. 
Now I could have very well just used the Y1 because I had typed it as Y1, but I'm not gonna do it this way. Next, I have to tell it, okay, well, what variable am I integrating with respect to? Well, there's only one variable here, it's X, so I better use X. And no shocker, I hit enter, 1.33333, exactly what we had expected from before. Now, uh, I'll repeat that again, but now I'm gonna go from zero to three. So I'll go math, nine, zero to three, and this time, I remember that I had typed this out in Y1, so I'm just gonna go second function trace, sorry, alpha trace, to pull up my Y bars and Y1 there. And I'll integrate Y1 with respect to X, and that should get me that number really close to zero, which it did. So that's two ways that you can integrate on your calculator. One is simply by typing it, and another is by graphing it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that it has been particularly helpful.